A couple of weeks ago, I did a tweet about a Wrexham, and um, it caused a few comments. Yes, I know I titled the video The Controversial Rise like last week, but just deal with it, okay? On Easter Monday, Wrexham played Notts County in an incredible top of the table clash, which could decide the fate of who goes up to the English Football League this season. Prior to kickoff, both clubs were joint on 100 points in the table. Alongside that, also incredibly scored the same amount of goals of 106 to highlight how incredible this is the team just behind them in third in walking was on 75 points 25 points behind second place and when you ask people about their thoughts on retsum and their success you get different answers depending on who you ask to some they may say that retsum is a great story that they are a club steeped in history that were in quite a lot of problems and may not have been run very well in the past and have been bought out, fortunately, by really wealthy owners. And they are part of a project that will see them rise up the pyramid and to actually have hope of becoming a competitive football club again. That will help not just the club, but the community. And if you ask other people, they may say something very different. That they may say something along the lines of Wrexham are almost cheating their way into the Football League. And the media obsession of Wrexham is almost patronising to the rest of the conference and the non-league in general. Acting like there's no other team other than Wrexham in the non-league, despite there being teams like Notts County doing just as good, getting only a fraction of the attention. And for many people, the constant barraging from the mainstream press and social media and the mainstream media that is constantly going on about the fact that they are a fairy tale story and they're doing something that is special. When you look at the papers, you look at the money they've been spending and the players that they've been bringing in, it's not a surprise to be seeing them doing as well as they have. And the fact they have been sold as a, an underdog story is annoying for people and i can see both sides to this argument so in today's video i will go into the controversial rise of Wrexham and tell me down below in the comments your thoughts on Wrexham are you a fan of how they've been doing things are you a fan of the story do you hate it do you think that it is a bad sign of where football could be going to the future tell me your thoughts down below in the comments and also if you are new then feel free and smash a like button it does help massively thank you for the insane support i think the last seven videos has all hit like 100,000 views which is mental so thank you honestly and also hit that sub button too it does help out a lot and also my own design company mazoladesigns.co.uk link at the top of the description the best football art to showcase your favorite iconic moments in football your favorite goals to showcase in your bedroom your office anywhere so link is down below use code prem for 10% off. And also shout out to all of the members on the Patreon. These guys give out a helping hand to help support what we do here. So to every single name on screen, thank you so much for becoming a part of the channel and just helping me and what I do. And let's get into the video. Before we do get into all that stuff, let's go into who are Wrexham, as that is important to add context for where I'm going to go into. Wrexham are one of the oldest football teams in existence, who play at the oldest international ground in the world. And for many people, Wrexham has always been famous and well known in a football league. Founded in 1864, they are the third oldest professional football club in the world. And not too long ago, well, the 90s, they knocked out Arsenal out of the FA Cup. And despite the club's golden heritage of being one of the oldest football clubs in the football pyramid, keeping quite a strong fan base and a strong connection to the community, they have spent the majority of their history in obscurity. Strangely enough, despite all of their years, they have never been in the top flight of English football once in entire history. Actually saying that, they haven't really been in the second tier really at all. Other than a roughly six, seven year period between the late 70s and early 80s. Wrexham for the vast majority has always been a third division or fourth division side. And since 2008, they have been stuck in non-league after being relegated at Hereford United 
in the 2007-08 season. Retson was really ever at threat of being relegated again, however was always just kind of mid-table or somewhat playoff challenging side for over a decade. And it looked like the idea of them getting promoted is unlikely, if not would be a minor miracle. In 2020, COVID happened. And with that, a large majority of teams were struggling to even survive. That is when, in late 2020, strange whispers of a takeover bid was emerging. Big money takeovers is pretty common for the Premier League. However, in non-league, it is extremely rare. So who wanted Wrexham? The Saudis? Maybe Qatari ownership? Or maybe somewhere else, maybe Thai ownership? No. In November 2020, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney bought Wrexham Football Club and received a backing of 98.6% of the 2,000 members of the Wrexham Supporters Trust. This was no joke. They seriously wanted to buy a non-league club from Wales. How it all came about was also quite extravagant, if you didn't know. There is one key man that links all of this, and that is a man called Humphrey Kerr. Humphrey was an actor and moved over to America, taking part in the famous American show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And his time over there, he had links to many famous people, including Rob McElhenney. As the story goes, Humphrey was a Liverpool fan, and when he watched games at the offices, Rob McElhenney sometimes watched the games with him, and actually mocked the sports because he saw it as boring, calling football slow and saying that things just rarely ever happened, unlike high scoring sports that are over in America like NBA and NFL. Allegedly, they watched Liverpool beat Barcelona and of course the famous 4-0 comeback thanks to Steve Okarigi. Rob caught an interest in football, so Humphrey recommended him the recent popular Netflix show Sunderland Till I Die. And I quote, according to Humphrey, he told me we should do this. We should buy a club and make a documentary. Before I really knew it, the conversation had moved on to who can we buy? Humphrey was dealt with a task to research which club would be the best to actually take over. And it came up with half a dozen football clubs within the football league or non-league pyramid in England that would be suitable takeovers. And it relied on two key factors, a club with history that needed a lift and had enough fans already to make the business work now or in the future based on the current attendances and the catchment area of the club. And that is when Wrexham came about. The fact that he was still receiving 4,500 average attendances in the National League was quite astonishing and really showed that they had a strong fan base. Alongside that, they also liked the fact that as they are actors and Americans, a fairy tale was storyline to go with it and the fact that they were actually saved by the fans of their own football club would lead to a great storyline as, again, they're Americans. Wrexham was fantastically supported by the community and without the supporters, they may not have even existed to this day before the takeover. Of course, if you look at Welsh geography, the majority of Welsh clubs that you may know of, such as, of course, Cardiff, Swansea, even Newport County, they are all right at the bottom of Wales, connected to the M4 motorway, is Wrexham all the way to the north of Wales, which is just near to the border, which you could connect to Liverpool. But that entire side of the northern part of Wales never had a club to really connect to. That is the reason why Wrexham had such a good following despite being in the non-league pyramid for about a decade. Is that for a large amount of people, about almost a million, didn't have anyone else to actually support around them. They had to prove themselves to the supporters of the club that they actually were serious and was not just taking the piss. That is why when they spoke to the supporters trust, this included a promise to put two million pounds into the club, build a new training facility and always beat Chester their main rivals. The supporters owned the club, so it was entirely their choice on if they were accepted or not. And since they got allowed for the door, things have changed quite dramatically. In their first full season, in the 2021-22 season, Wrexham finished second before losing the playoff semi-final 5-4 to Grimsby Town after extra time. The suffering did not end there as Wrexham also reached the 2022 FA Trophy final and lost 1-0 to Bromley. The rise of Wrexham from being a mid-table club with maybe some playoff contention to almost being a sure thing to get promoted is not surprising considering they brought in the likes of Paul Mullen who, when they signed him, was the League 2 Player of the Year in the league prior. This was due to his exceptional season at Cambridge United, where he scored 32 goals in League 2, 
the division above where Wrexham was playing in. So to see him smashing the National League, scoring 35 goals in 42 games this year, is again not surprising. Alongside that, side many decent players from the division above. Usually when you're sending players from the division above you, it is players that are on the cusp, on the fringe, and may not be getting good game time. But in this case, it was very much strong players. Ben Tozza, who came from Cheltenham Town for £200,000, was a regular in that side. In the previous year, before signing for Wrexham, he played 46 games out of 46 for Cheltenham Town in League 2. James Jones, who played pretty much his entire career in League 2 and League 1, playing in League 1 for Lincoln City, dropped down two tiers to play for Wrexham. And for one more example, Aaron Hayden, who played pretty much every single game, 44 out of 46 the previous year, for Carl United, who was one of the best players, took the step down to the National League 2. The point I'm trying to get across here is the fact that these players are not just fringe players of the leagues above. These are key starters or even in some cases the best player in the league in the likes of Paul Mullen. This means that a large core of their team currently are with players that really shouldn't be playing in this level to begin with. And that is just a stark reality. But for the most part, does this really matter? This is when if you're on the side of do not like Retsum and what they are doing, then this is where you'd be like, see, obviously this is unfair. Obviously, this could be seen as cheating or whatever you may want to call it. The term bought the league is something that has been thrown around for a long time and as far back as Blackburn Rovers back in 1995, but in most popular times, Manchester City being bought by Dubai ownership and went on to become the mammoth football club they are now thanks to that takeover and people say that they've bought their league, they've bought their success and that is something that people use as a bat to hit people with to justify I don't I don't know at this stage that maybe the success that you went through is not justified or earned or or proper or just and I think it is more heated and and personal when it comes to Wrexham in a National League because the challenge of getting out of the National League is fierce you are dealing with impacting the actual health of a club if a club is in the National League they are at real risk of ceasing to exist. Money is scarce at this level. So when you do have money in the way and the manner that Retsum does have money, that makes a big, big difference. And that one spot that goes to Retsum for potentially going up, that could mean a team could be going down or missing out. That potentially could be damaging and actually destroying the football club and with that comes the members of staff that may lose their jobs and most importantly the community that may actually miss out on a football club that is why when you're speaking about Retsum and why they may be seen as controversial in the way that they've gone up in the pyramid i get completely why people may not like it and especially when you are being told by the mainstream media and the press that they are a underdog story and that they are a, a fairy tale story of a club rising up from the ashes and when you are in that zone when you are in the non-league and you're seeing that and the only thing you are being told about your league is Wrexham and they are failing to add any highlights or any love to any other teams other than this one club then I get their frustration completely especially if you are a not County fan that are doing the exact same thing as Wrexham without the same amount of insane financial support that Wrexham has got. So I may have gone into quite a few things of why people will dislike Wrexham and in my own personal opinion I am on the side of I don't mind them being bought out because I want to put this across here. I want to go back to my original tweet that I put at the start of this video. I tweeted this out on March the 25th just last month saying the hate for Wrexham I don't get really. We all complain that too many clubs aren't well run by fit and proper owners. Now a club has been fortunate of being ran by ambitious owners that backs it and the community, there's a problem. Do these people want clubs in limbo forever? Maybe the tone that people read it may rub people the wrong way, but my underlying point is the fact that clubs have been run by awful people for a long time and we always hear the sob stories and the horror stories of these clubs being run down to the ground and not being treated in the way that they should. So when we actually see a situation where a club has got ambitious owners, have actually took the community and saying we're going to take you somewhere, which is something that every single fan of every club dreams to happen. It doesn't care where you are in the pyramid, if you're Premier League to League One or the Conference everyone dreams for big investments because big investment means money and money means 
success in football and that is just the stark reality of it not all the times there are some exceptions Leicester City in 2016 they spent nowhere near as much money as the rest of the Premier League especially at the top six and they did what they did they won the Premier League another great example is Luton Town they are in third place of the championship with nowhere near the resources that any other team there has got in the top level and never mind that they came all the way from the national league and it went up through the divisions naturally in a natural way without massive investment with smart ownership with smart recruitment with smart strategy and they've rose up through the divisions in what people would say a just correct and rightful way and that is what people would say that is what they want to see in football clubs winning by being smarter than the opponent and outthinking them in long-term or short-term strategy and that is why people look at a Luton and they look at a Wrexham and they say that Luton doing things the right way and Wrexham doing things the wrong way but in reality I do think there is some sour grapes and jealousy when it comes to some of these people that have these thoughts and this is how I can prove it if your club were open to having brand new ownership and investment massive investment that would completely change the idea of your football club and will make it competitive and can actually dream of being competitive in higher leagues or if you're in the Premier League then competing for European spots would you take it of course you would who wouldn't take that maybe the idea of Americanization of football could be annoying people the fact that the actual story of them buying Wrexham all came from them watching a Netflix documentary of Sunderland until I die and thinking let's do that which sounds crazy and it is crazy and probably goes to show why this is quite a extraordinary story you may say that yeah but think about all the other clubs think of Notts County think of Walking think of Barnets think of Dagenham and Redbridge think of all these teams and I get that right completely but the way I see it football is ran by money and it will always be ran by money we are too far gone into this world of money and power and we can't change it now and that may sound really sad but i think almost every single club in a top level of english football or european football i think they've all got something dodgy people want to point fingers at the saudis at newcastle or dubai on the ship at man city and say that they're doing things the wrong way it's dirty money sports washing but I'll be honest, I think a lot of clubs are doing things. If they're run by billionaires, if they're run by billionaires, they've done something dodgy to get there 90% of the time. So I think most people are doing things dodgy in football nowadays. So it may sound really, like, really sad, but that's just how I see football. I think any successful club are f***ing around at this stage. Investors overseas, they all want to be involved in the English game. They know the money that is in English football. They can sense it from our way. And these people, and this could be a positive thing or a negative thing. That in the positive way of Wrexham, I think Ryan and Rob have done things the best way imaginable. They've made a documentary about their club and increased the reach and the reputation of the club worldwide and that will always be powerful for them forever. They invested in the club, they invested in the community, they've improved the squad and they are very, very likely of being a football league club next year. And and you never know with more money can actually rise up to league two but on the other hand as we've seen with some clubs that the owners can be just narcissistic and try to use a club as a plaything almost as a, a a sense of power from owning a club and not treat it in the right way so maybe someone may see what's happening at Wrexham and think I want a bit of that could buy a national league team for example and try and do the same thing but have just ill intentions and could drive it down to the ground if not run correctly and this is a danger i think it won't be long to another national league club is being bought out by ownership similar to ryan reynolds or maybe even ownership from overseas in a different country the potential of the money that they can make is massive and i think people are aware of that now and with a documentary welcome to Wrexham that i've watched myself on disney plus because i have a daughter don't blame me the potential of Wrexham is incredible and if i was a Wrexham fan then how lucky must you feel right now good lord and to show one stat of how important and how powerful the reach of ryan reynolds is to an american ownership is that their game against Sheffield United was ESPN's most followed football game across its digital platforms. ESPN's most followed football game. Not the Champions League final. Not even the World Cup. Okay? ESPN most followed football game was Sheffield United versus Wrexham. That is mental. And the potential of Wrexham cannot be underestimated. Tell me your thoughts down below. I've kind of waffled on for the last 10 
15 minutes, but I think it's important to make this not really a, an informational statistical piece and just kind of give my thoughts for the for the pros and cons of Rets and being bought out. I get completely why people may not like them because they think that they are doing things the wrong way and could actually be destroying other football clubs by basically buying their way out of the division and not doing things in a justified, rightful manner. I get that. But I think in football, we've gone to a stage where football and money will always come together. There's maybe a slight bit of jealousy in there and that the media attention that Wrexham gets could be really frustrating. But in reality, they are that big now. They are that big to get all that attention. So to call them underdogs is not correct. So I wouldn't be calling them that. But there is definitely a great story there and is one that I'll be following with a close eye. So... Tell me down below your thoughts. Smash the like button if you guys did enjoy. Let's try to hit 3,000 likes and also subscribe if you're new. Thank you all so much for the support. And I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe.